Now, joining us today to discuss these latest developments, we have with us Cho Jung Hun, the director of the Aju Institute of Unification at Aju University. Professor Jo, thank you for your time today. Pleasure to be here. Now, it's been revealed that Sung Kim has met with Che Sonny again at Panmunjom for working level talks between the US and North Korea. It seems to be preparatory talks towards uh, Mike Pompeo's visit to Pyongyang later this week, perhaps. What do you make of this development? I think this meeting, um, if it takes place, is going to take place within three weeks um, after, or less than three weeks after the summit in Singapore. Mm. In a normal international diplomacy, it's very timely. It's mm. very fast. Of course, I'm aware that there are some voices here in Seoul and as well as international community that uh, it's really too slow, uh, especially the, the rhetorics of uh, Donald Trump mm. uh, right after the summit in Singapore. But uh, in a normal situation, preparing the working level meeting after the summit within three weeks mm. is very, very fast. And also, uh, it's, I believe this is the third visit of uh, U.S. Uh, Secretary of State visiting Pyongyang. Mm. And um, unless he knows that something will come out, mm. I don't think he will put his foot into North Korean territory again. Mm. So I believe from today, when a working level meeting took place, until the actual visit, the real discussion is now taking place. Mm. But you said uh, it's very fast, three weeks is is, is uh, not a lot of time between uh, the summit and follow-up talks. Uh, and you say Pompeo will not go unless there is something. But what do you think can actually come out of it then? I mean, we're not really sure what they're going to talk about. And it's, we're expecting it to be very important towards North Korea's denuclearization. But what can we actually realistically expect to come out of this talk? Realistically, I think it's the key word. <laughs> um, there's a lot of wishful thinking and talk. Mm. Um, Again, a meeting again at the working level within three weeks. Uh, I believe, as Donald Trump indicated in Singapore, there were a lot of, or at least a few important, uh, unwritten agreements between two sides, mm. which were not revealed in, in the agreement, as we saw. Mm. Unless there were such an agreement, uh, this three weeks time is too short to prepare the working level meeting. Mm. Um, if you say working level, uh, it's not really working level because state of the secretary of the state. Mm. Um, now there are two expectations. One is more wishful thinking, I believe, is to have a, a clear timetable uh, toward uh, denuclearization, mm. whether it's one year or two year or beyond, clear timetable. Uh, to me, uh, I'm, I'm a bit uh, skeptical of the feasibility of such timetable because um, it's, it's too much of give up to one side. Mm. If you sign up such a, a, a timetable, any deviation will be seen as, as breaking up the agreement. Mm. Uh, in order for sign such a, a specific timetable, uh, there will be a proportionate specific, specific level of details uh, from the other side in terms of reward, in terms of compensation. Mm. So far, we haven't seen any specific information about what kind of compensation North Korea will get from U.S. international community as well as South Korea. Mm. So in the absence of such specific information, signing on a specific timetable, um, no smart brain will do that. <laughs> uh, so what would be a uh, ex really realistic uh, expectation, as you indicate, is I believe is a few immediate, meaningful next steps. Mm. Uh, a closure of certain things, uh, closing down certain programs, or um, hopefully announcing uh, dismantling few, not all, mm. uh, uh, nuclear weapons itself themselves mm. could be very important significant steps. Mm. Uh, I believe if we achieve that level, I think momentum will continue to be alive mm. and next step is coming forward. So you talk about significant steps, but perhaps small significant steps at the moment. But then Nash, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton comes out and says, we have a plan ready to denuclearize North Korea within a year if North Korea cooperates. I mean, what do you make of something, a statement like that? Is that a realistic goal for de dismantling the Pyongyang's nuclear weapons within one year? As we interpret Trump's statement with a sense of salt and pepper, mm. we do have to apply the same uh, method to John Bolton's statement. <laughs> I believe he's playing a very smart bad cop. 
within U.S. administration mm. and uh, sending out the message that Trump doesn't want to deliver himself because he wants to play a good cop, mm. uh, rightfully so, vis-à-vis uh, mm. -vis North Korea and international community. Mm. And if you listen to his, um, his news interview carefully, he said it is possible mm. uh, to do so. And I think he also know that it is remotely possible. Uh, it's not theoretically impossible. And he's stating the fact. However, he's not meaning to complete the whole process, but he's adding the pressure, keeping on the pressure, so that um, when, uh, for example, Pompeo visited, uh, Pompeo can say there's a strong uh, skeptics and doubts in Washington, such as someone yeah, mm. um, who believes that our current ongoing conversation will result in nothing. Uh, I think that's, that's exactly the role of the bad cop. <laughs> and for that sense, he's, he's playing a very smart bad cop role. So, I mean, let's talk about that role mm. just a little bit more. I mean, he did take a backseat, seemed to take a backseat role during the uh, North Korea-US summit because he seemed to have angered, his, uh, his comments seemed to have angered North Korea when he talked about the Libya model of denuclearization. And uh, what do you make of his re-emergence as such as this kind of bad cop role in the US TV media to uh, Trump's administration right now? History has no hypothesis, but if you look back, Mm. and imagine a situation that John Bolton didn't say such a word mm. and North Korea didn't react with such a fierce response, mm. then I believe Singapore summit June 12 probably would have not happened. Mm. Because he escalated the level of the game up to the level that it's kind of make or break situation. And Donald Trump signed a letter May 24th, right, mm. with that import, impressive signature. Mm -hmm. And North Korea within 24 hours responded. Mm. And again, I think he is escalating the level of, um, I would say, tension uh, or, 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 or sense of expectation. And when Pompeo's visit comes and he expects some meaningful result comes out against the backdrop of this warning. Um, to me, um, I'm not surprised that mm. he mentioned and he continues to his uh, bad cop uh, mm. rhetoric and, and, and stories. And also U.S. government um, is run by st a system, not by specific individuals. Mm. John Bolton, as a as an advisor, security advisor, I think is playing his role, mm. rightfully so. Uh, is supposed to add very conservative, very security-oriented voices to the whole administration's policy-making process. Mm. And of course, Donald Trump will have to balance mm. his talk with a more uh, more forward-looking, positive voices. Mm. The U.S. media are currently citing U.S. intelligence sources that are saying that North Korea has continued to enrich uranium and has been expanding its missile facilities as well. How surprising or unsurprising is that to you? And does it seem that the summits with the U.S. and South Korea, it's the, the North Korean nuclear program is continuing as normal despite these uh, summits that have happened recently? I think it's interesting to say the least that uh, these images have been exposed and, and shared with the international community. Mm. Uh, what does it tell? Uh, does it mean North Korea has decided to stop following the agreement with the U.S.? I don't think so. Mm. Uh, does it, uh, no one actually expected that right after Singapore summit on June 12, both sides will stop any hostile actions. Mm. Um, we, don't expect, we haven't expected that North Korea will announced moratorium for the ongoing development of nuclear capacity. Uh, we know that Yongbyon facility has been closed down and others. So North Korea has uh, made at least a minimum commitment completed. Mm. But at the same time, unless and until peace talk uh, is signed, peace agreement is signed, as well as and they, they believe the U.S. is no longer a threat to their own regime, and U.S. and the international community provide support uh, needed support for their own economic recovery and, and prosperity. I believe North Korea will try to keep at least one or two other options in their pocket. Mm. Uh, so at the moment, there's no moratorium mm. uh, of entire moratorium of their capacity build, uh, nuclear development. But at the same time, they're ready to listen what other table, other side is bringing to the table. Mm. So to me, it's a sign that U.S. And, and North Korean ongoing negotiation will take probably longer than some of us expect. Mm. One year, certainly not. <laughs> Two years probably is short mm. 
to me, it, it's more of an Israel-Palestine peace talk. Mm. Uh, when 19, it, it, it took about three and a half years mm. before uh, they sign on any meaningful paper on Oslo in 1993. Mm. So to me, it's, it's a process that is starting. And that process itself is de decreasing the level of tension in our peninsula. And it's, it's kind of give and take negotiation and try to bring down one level at a time, mm. the level of tension, the, the capacity of North Korean nuclear development. So you're telling us we need to be patient. Patience <laughs> is the key. Yeah. Uh, if you want to finish this business within a year or two in, in a very rushed way, something will break out. In the meantime, Kim Jong-un has made his first public appearance, it seems, since his uh, third summit with Xi Jinping. And it happens to be that he was reported to have toured the factories in Xiniju, a city near the border next to China. Is it just coincidence that after his first appearance with Xi Jinping, that it, he uh, turns up in a region that has strong economic ties with China? Or is there a, is a different message that he's trying to send out? There are two messages I believe Kim Jong-un wants to send out, that he cares about economic well-being of his people. Mm. That these factories that uh, Kim Jong-un visited produce one of the rare uh, customer items, not industrial goods, such as cosmetics. So he really wants to send out a message that he really cares about the everyday life uh, of citizens um, of North Korea. Why Shiniju? Mm. Uh, just after <laughs> Xi Jinping. It can be coincidence, it can be intentional. Uh, to me, more than um, the location itself, I believe the China, North Korea, North Korea, China economic cooperation will increase uh, and it can be a very significant factor for the ongoing peace talk mm. uh, because as we know well China has been a sole supplier of lifeline to many North Korean lives as well as the leadership um, with many many pressure from US China practically de facto has closed down that pipeline closed the tap mm. now all signs and indication and then, and then um, the witnesses from the border uh, shows that China is now opening up the tap. Mm. Now, after their effort to actually uh, decrease the level of sanction in UN, I think they try to open up even more the tap, mm. and that might that might influence the whole equation of North Korea. Mm. How seriously uh, North Korea should deal with U.S. pressure, and whether they can survive, mm. and how long is their timeline. Without such sanction from, without lifting of sanction from China, everybody, not everybody, many in Korea and others expected that the economic life of China, uh, North Korea can be really devastated within a year or two. Mm. With the opening up of that uh, border and the continuing, recontinuing of the supply, um, the lifeline of Ch North Korea can expand uh, to five to six years, if not decades. Mm. Then, North Korea will have many other factors to consider before signing any uh, serious deal with U.S. So this is very important development we need to watch carefully. Mm, yes, we need to watch the China-North Korea relationship as well as the North Korea-U.S. relationship very closely. Indeed. Renier, thank you for coming in today and thank you for sharing your insights with us. Thank you very much.